Yo dog, Katie Boucher here, Next Level Painting. Hitting you up with another painting tutorial. Obviously, it's Friday, the best of all days. I am very excited. We did some stuff super near and dear to me, Blood Angels. I can't tell you how many times I have dreamed myself into the black rage, woken up in a, in a sweat and just knew I had to get my Blood Angel fix on that week and I had to play something with Mephiston, you know? So I was really happy to be able to paint Mephiston at Dante. Now, I'm excited to do five simple tricks to painting Nurgle. Specif specifically, the more realistic leathery Nurgle effects. Uh, not some like, hyper green effects, but um, some more traditional Nurgle. Nurgle for life, chaos for life. So I'm really excited about this tutorial today. We're gonna cover a lot of basic tricks using some of the privateer press line, obviously some Vallejo stuff, and obviously washes, dry brush technique, and of course, always gotta use some airbrush. Let's talk about the Long War just real quick. Don't forget, thelongwar.net is your portal for exclusive and early access to all the battle reports, the webcast, these tutorials come out a week early over there. All this stuff, as a matter of fact, comes over a week early. Everything seven days early with no ads. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. That is my personal crowdfunding page. This is how I bring Hobby back. Go over there, take a look at it. If you feel like you have a couple extra bucks to throw my way, please don't hesitate. I will send you a gift. I will shout you out. And I'll, more importantly, I will use the money 100% of it to help bring Hobby back in my own particular way. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Let's do this thing. Five simple tricks to painting Nurgle. That fresh, realistic skin tone. Obviously, we're gonna be painting some OG Plague Toes. And tip one, burn umber. Get your burn umber game on lock. This is not the first time you've seen me talk about the magnificence of burn umber. It is simply amazing. It works in so many situations. So we're going to lay it down over black, and as I've said before, Burr Umber over black is my favorite version of Burr Umber. I don't like it the way it interacts over a gray or a lighter primer in general. It's all about the black. The reason we use um, spray paint still, everyone, a lot of people might think that we use airbrush uh, primers. The thing is, is when you're using resin models or metal models especially, you can't just leave it up to the acrylic in the air. Make sure you need that enamel, like really to be your base. or it's gonna it's just gonna chip you're just not gonna be happy so we've gone through here and we painted all the plague toads you can see they're all nice simple burnt umber they're ready to accept our green now we're gonna be using thornwood green from the privateer press line these guys make great colors so tip two upgrade your greens get a tighter green game p3 P formula they have a lot of great like just colors that work with each other and it's really easy to figure out which colors are which. So we're gonna use Thornwood Green right over the Burr Umber. It's gonna be kind of heavy, but still we're gonna be doing kind of that top down uh, lighting. You know, we're gonna come straight from the, from the top, the Zinthia highlight kind of deal. Cause we still do wanna keep some darkness of the brown in there, but we're not like super crazy. It's just a, it's just a good way to start. Now we're gonna jump up to Trader Green. This is like the official Nurgle Green of the Privateer Press line. This green has to be in your arsenal if you love Nurgle, it is the best. So we're gonna take this green over the top. Same kind of deal, kind of a Xenthial highlight. A little bit of a 45 degree angle on the face going straight into a 90. You're gonna start really trying to let it interact with the Thornwood uh, Green and the Burn Umber now. You're really gonna try to preserve some of that darkness that we left behind. This will start immediately popping out the model, as you see. It's starting to really look Nurgle. It's starting to have a real sickly green tone to it. I have been using Trader Green for a long time. One of my best friends of all time, Brandon Palmer, turned me on to it all back in the day, like 2010. Hit me up. How do you paint Nurgle, dog? Yo, Trader, G Trader Green, it'll change your life. So now we're gonna jump in with some yellow. Tip three, thug life. This is the life I live right here. Pour a little bit of that yellow, good medium yellow, and pour it right into the pot with what Trader Green you had left. 
cover the tip, let a little air in, let it mix up, knock down some of those bubbles, don't overthink it. There it is. Now we're gonna take this new concoction and we're gonna start highlighting uh, yet again, but kind of, you know, subtle. We don't wanna wipe out all the traded green, we wanna just kinda of highlight it. Getting your yellows mixed into your greens is a good way to create a sickly Nurgle green. It is, it is a must have. Like a lot of people will fuck up when they get an airbrush and start adding white and stuff to colors to brighten it. That is not, that is not how you do it in every situation. Only a few situations actually call for that situation. Now that we've gotten that Thug Life concoction in there, go in there with just a little bit of pure yellow and just pop out. Cause you can see now that that, that yellow has dried up, you can see it's a little bit more subtle than it looked when it was wet. Now we're gonna come in and just hit it with some pure yellow and just set like the face, like really focus on that Zenthio highlight and it's gonna look good. Tip four, level up your wash game. This is GW wash only. We're using literally some Arjax or Argrax Earthshade, some Nun Oil and some of their green wash. I p p literally mix them together, however it looks good to you, make it look like sewage water, basically. I'm gonna come through, shake it real good, put a BB in there, you know, make, make it, let it keep it mixing. Don't well, shake it often, and just lay this wash down thick. Get your wash game on lock if you wanna paint everyone. So now that we've done all that, we're gonna go through, you know, obviously hit them all. Tip five, dry brush. Simple dry brush technique. We're gonna take the trader green and the yellow. We're gonna get a good big brush. And we're gonna come back to those models and look at these models with that wash on them. They're really looking just busted up. Like leathered out skin. Come in and just really subtly dry brush. Can't emphasize the dry in this brush. Get it nice and dry and just bring those ridges back out. You know, uh, you feel it out, left or right, up or down, wherever, whatever part of the model you're on, like feel it out. You'll see like some of those darker areas. I save those for last to where there's almost no paint left in the brush. You don't want to get streaks in this in this in this step. You know, I'm really gonna show you guys like there's a lot to dry brush. You know, you if you you gotta keep it, you gotta keep the effect subtle. You know, really keep it dry, come back to it often. We're saving a lot of time with this technique, so you really wanna make sure you don't streak the, that paint all over the place. And I'm gonna show you here again from a top-down angle. Like I, I just want to drive it home how important it is to be subtle with this dry brush technique. This particular toad had bigger, more round uh, warts on his back. I already know from experience that those like to streak. So I'm just showing you here. And you can see like it's really starting to pop the toad out. He is starting to look super, super interesting. You know, like he's got that dark leathery skin that transitions up, that antique look. But now he's got something interesting about him. He's got a little bit of color. And that's what it comes down to. It's about using colors to highlight your models, not white. It's about using light colors to darken your model, not black. And as you can see here, these guys look nasty, man. So we're gonna move into the next stage here. We're gonna use Sanguine Base. And this is more in the uh, painting the frog stage. I've hit you with the, the five simple tricks. Now I'm gonna show you some airbrush technique. Bring that dark red out. Uh, and use your airbrush as much as possible. We're gonna start subtly blending some of that uh, really dark red into some of the areas of the frog, kind of creating those weird, gross, you know, transitions to where like flesh meets flesh. And also, I'm gonna paint all this crap in his mouth uh, pink eventually. So use the airbrush here. Since we're like letting the reds, you know, be in certain areas of the of the model, go in there and just start the, start the process now and start painting that red in there. And he's also got these big Joker smiles. Let that red get inside those cracks there, anywhere you think, you know? This may look a little crazy right now at this stage, but you gotta, you gotta kinda see the step ahead when you're painting with an airbrush. It's the only way to truly use the airbrush. Uh, you know, and all the, all the toads are different. They don't all have like the same exact face, so I'm gonna show you a couple other ones. Same deal, coming from the ass, come in that b-hole region, it's faded up on his ribbit frog legs, uh, you know, Bring it into that little Joker smile, on, you know, under the armpits. Just real simple stuff, man. This it just really adds character. Using colors to shade areas, you know, using colors to brighten areas. Let's jump into red. Skylar red. This is a classic Vallejo color I use a lot. It's a really seriously serious red. We're gonna come in here and now we're gonna like, you know, use the airbrush to pick up some slack here. Like I said, I'm gonna highlight these mouths. I'm gonna I'm gonna make these mouths pinky and red, but. 
Like I said, don't just paint, don't sit there and wet blend it all with a paintbrush when you literally own an airbrush. And it doesn't take any skill at all to get inside there with that red and not, you know, ruin the model. Look at these guys. These guys are like just simply amazing looking, you know, like <laughs> same deal. Just very subtly accentuate some of the red that we did on those, um, those back regions. It's, it's make it look nasty, man. Like it's, he's looking like, yo, this frog. I don't know what he does, but I don't want to be near this frog. You know, he's disgusting. That red really blows people's mind. So now we're going to take that pink, real simple. And I'm all about the greens and the pinks. I've been doing it since the, the 90s. And go in there real subtle and just start blending that pink into that red. Same deal. Give it that Xanthio highlight. Let the red catch all the shadow. Real simple. Now you got yourself a pretty solid starting point for all the hard work of painting that interior of that mouth. And um, we're going to come back in with the red now that we've, we've established the pink and back blend that mid-tone back with the red. And this is a technique I use often. Sometimes I just want to get that, I want to come back in with that mid-tone. Well, anyway, guys, that was pretty easy. That was five simple tricks. Next week, we're going to finish these toads up. I'm going to use some more wash techniques, some more blending technique, and we're going to put them on their bases and they're going to look amazing. Anyway, thanks for watching players. Thanks for checking out that video. Don't forget, I've got tons of other tutorials in the archives and I do this every week for free. If you're looking for an ad-free experience, check out the longward.net. All these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad-free. Also, check out my best friend Rob Bear at Spiky Bits and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.